Hi, I'm Erica Friedman. I'm the author of By Your Side, The First 100 Years of Yuri Anime and Manga. You can find me at okazu.yurikan.com, which is my blog, or on Twitter at uh, Okazu Yuri. Right now, you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to Rapid Fire. The concept of Rapid Fire is simple. 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes for the interview itself. And we get to talk with creative and talented people in the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? We are joined today by a very talented individual. She has way more knowledge in anime and manga, especially in the Yuri genre, when it comes to the culture itself, more so than myself, which is wonderful because I love talking about anime and manga. But we are joined today by the ever-talented Erica Friedman. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me tonight. It's going to be a pleasure having you. I want to have you on for a longer show because I think we're going to blow by these 15 minutes too quickly. So. Probably. Absolutely. And as everyone who knows me knows, I can talk. Who are you and what exactly are you promoting? Uh, my name is Erica Friedman. I'm an LGBTQ manga tastemaker and lesbian icon. Uh, I write about, I talk about, I think about lesbian themed Japanese animation and comics, a genre called Yuri. Today, I'm specifically talking about my upcoming book called By Your Side, the first 100 years of Yuri anime and manga. It traces the Yuri genre from its literary roots back in the early 20th century to the present day and how much it's changed over the 100 years. I've been watching your series on YouTube. I, I love all of that stuff. You have an amazing collection of history that I never knew about. So, uh, you know, you have a subscriber now. So I will take full advantage of, of your knowledge in that regard. Thank you very much. And I, I appreciate I thoroughly that. enjoy it. What is the most misunderstood aspect about Yuri anime and manga? Well, that's a really good question, and it's good because it's complicated. I think the most misunderstood thing is most people will codify something in their head from the first time they ever heard about it. So whatever people hear about Yuri the first time is probably what they think it is. It's the newest genre of anime and manga. Um, all the other genres, the demographic genres, the genres like shoujo and seinen and, and shonen and, and jose have been around for much longer, uh, like BL, Yuri is not one of those demographic genres, but it kind of has roots in all the others. So what people will say is whatever they read first, they're like, oh, Yuri is porn, or Yuri is for children, or Yuri is for women, or Yuri is for men. And that's actually not true. Yuri exists in all the demographic genres in different ways. So as I like to say, Yuri is for whomever likes Yuri. That is to say, if you're a person who like the series with a cool lesbian couple or a sweet romance between girls or even an intense emotional relationship between, I don't know, say assassins or whatever, that's Yuri. What is the most recent video that you've created that you've always wanted to create but never had time to do? Great question. Thank you. Uh, so the video we just released on Yuri Studio is called Girl Gangs in Anime and Manga. I have an obsession about girl gang anime and manga. I love it. There's a little tie into Yuri and all of them, but it's not really the main point. The main point is it's just crazy nonsense <laughs> and lots of fighting, and I love it. So I just did Girl Gangs in Yuri Anime and Manga, and I hope you'll watch that on Yuri Studio. I had a lot of fun doing it. What is the second wisest piece of advice that you've ever received that has stuck with you in your creative endeavors? That was rough. That one was rough because the one that was my number one advice was from my mom, which is, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that, she told me that when I was 11 and I've really worked with that for a whole lifetime. But the second best piece of advice is if you write, you're a writer. Create videos, you're a creator. Exactly. A lot of people say, well, I'm not a writer because blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Did you write something today? You're a writer. There you go. What challenges do Yuri authors and creators face today? Well, I'd say probably the issue of funding, particularly queer creators of Yuri. It's still a niche market. It's growing even in Japan and the US. I think it's pretty solid. It's, it's a growing market, but it's always harder to get funding and marketing for things that are queer focused and queer created. And in the way of the world, things created by men tend to get the lion's share of funding and marketing where stuff by women tends to go under the radar, which is why I always say, if you're interested in Yuri, one of the, your best tools is looking at something like Kickstarter, where they're, where they're promoting queer work by queer people. And of course, my blog Okazu, where I'm also surfacing stuff that you might not otherwise have had a chance to see. As a creator yourself, then what challenges have you had to face when you started setting up not only 
your site, but also getting your voice heard? The first set of challenges aren't really challenges for me particularly, and there's a reason why. What I found a lot of at the time, which was back in the early 2000s, so I started writing in 2002, was actually a lot of guys saying, oh, you know, you're is it for women. You have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm like, it's not a challenge for me. They want it to be a challenge for me. But I kind of was like, eh, I don't care what you think. So never really became a huge challenge to care what my reception was. I had something I wanted to say. I had a narrative I wanted to tell. I wanted had an audience out there I knew I could reach. So I just kept doing that. But that is a challenge when anybody who is marginalized starts any sort of creative endeavor. There is a group of people who will never create a thing in their lives. And their only response always consistently is to try to take it down. And that's sad and pathetic. The only way to really deal with that is just to keep going. And the thing that I found is that you just keep going. If you just are where you are and you just keep going, eventually they're gone and you're still where you were. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? This was really an interesting moment. I had been reviewing things for about five, six, seven years, somewhere in the mid-2000s. And I wrote a review and it was not a nice review. It was very unkind. I was very angry about the work. It made me feel very angry that anybody liked it at all. I was just so frustrated by the fact that it had an audience. And I wrote some really nasty things. And one of my better commenters at the time, and I mean by better, a person who was always writing really thoughtful, meaningful comments about what I was writing, wrote me and said, this one hurt. And maybe you might want to rethink this. People are coming to you for thoughts and advice. And it's not so much that I was insulting. It was that I was so angry that I was taking it out on my readership. And my readership, a priori, ought to be my allies. You know, I should ally with them. We are talking about stuff that we all love. And even if I don't love this particular piece, I can say, well, I know there's some of you who do. And this is why I didn't like it, but I can understand that you may. And that really, really changed the way I write my reviews. What did you create that, what was the first piece of work that you created where you thought, yes, I could do this professionally? So I actually started this career as a magazine writer. I was writing for some of the early anime magazines and I was super excited that I could write stuff. And one of the first things I was really motivated by was on America magazine. Uh, had a cover art piece of um, Revolutionary Girl Utena, and they had an article about Utena, and I thought, wow, you know, this is the kind of stuff I want to write about, and I was very lucky I had an opportunity to write a few articles for them at the end of the last century, and then I was started my own blog for various reasons. Ten years into my blog, I thought, you know what, um, there's Patreon now, and maybe I can make a go of this. Maybe people will actually pay me. And I didn't expect many people would, but man, was I blown out of the water. So many of my readers were really, really excited about the opportunity to pay for the stuff that I was writing. And we've gone on and bigger and better things since. And you do very well, I must say. I enjoy everything that you've done. Thank you. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? It's my mother, actually. My mother is a genuine extrovert, and I am an introvert, although I fake it pretty well. And the bottom line is that my mother taught me how to deal with people very, very early on. Even today, when I get a little bit uh, caught up in myself, or I'm starting to wear out, particularly on a long, you know, long event or meeting a lot of people, I'll think, well, what did she? What would she do right now? You know, and, and it's motivated me to learn to walk over to people in, in the corner and say, hi, I'm Erica. Who are you? Why are you here? And I've made a lot of really good friends by just faking being an extrovert. Yeah, I say I'm a, an extrovert that happens to be more introverted. So. Uh, I say I'm an introvert who can fake it beautifully. <laughs> I like that. I might have to borrow that. <laughs> From a, a creative writing perspective and, and an author perspective, you are professionally successful in that regard. You've done this for, for many years uh, successfully as well, too, and you'll continue to do so. So professionally, you are successful that way. Do you consider yourself personally successful? Oh, heck yeah. Uh, I have a wonderful wife. We've been together almost four decades. Um, I love my day job. I love my home. I love my avocation. I love my friends. I have great friends. And I get to do stuff like this. So yeah, I would totally say I'm, I'm successful personally. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? All right. So I'm a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, and I, I say that with, with a lot of laughter because I'm actually a triple Virgo. Um, what that means is I'm a realist. Bottom line, I'm very realistic. I feel bad a little bit. I complain to friends. I cry into my uh, coffee. I cross it off the list and I move on to the next project. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way. And I'm sure they're learning many things along the way as well, too, when it comes to anime and manga and yourself as, a, as an author. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? This is my main message to everybody, not just younger generation, but to older generation, to literally everybody watching this, do that thing. Just do the thing, whatever it is, write it, sing it, dance it, draw it, just do it. Make a video, um, write up a, a PowerPoint. I don't care what it is, that thing that was in your head, just do it. It doesn't even have to be good. It doesn't have to be monetized. It doesn't have to be a side hustle it, or make money or anything. It just get the thing done. And someone out there will have their life changed by it. That's my message. Well, before I let you go and, and end this particular interview, which is flown by, truly, <laughs> where can we find you and how can we support you online and uh, through any other social medias? Uh, you can always find me on Twitter, Okazu Yuri. Okazu is my blog, O-K-A-Z-U dot YuriCon.com. Twitter account is Okazu Yuri. And also so is my Patreon is Okazu. That is where you can find me, support me. Um, I write all my content, all the actual reviews and interviews and everything is all free. So it, you don't even have to go to Patreon, just go straight to okazu.yurikon.com and everything is there. Um, if you want to support me and you get nothing for it except my thanks, because I don't give away things, I give you the content for free. What I give you is my undying appreciation. You can go to Patreon. And of course, I am on Twitter all the time talking about many things, but mostly anime and manga. And today I'm watching a really great anime called Birdie Wing, which if you want to see crazy pants, it's like criminal syndicate golf. It's fantastic. So I highly recommend it. Awesome. Well, I do hate to say this, Erica, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I really greatly appreciate it. And thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, Kurt. I want to thank you for taking the time to be on this interview of Two Geeks Talking Rapid Fire. You can find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, twogeekstalking.com or tgtmedia.com and on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on Two Geeks Talking.